Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The announcement that a woman is pregnant is never ordinary news. It is either very good news or very bad news. There is no in-between about it. And I imagine many of you have had one or even both of those experiences. But good news or bad news, new life is on the way. It will come to pass. And like death and paying taxes, we just have to figure out how to deal with it. We will celebrate and hand out cigars, or we will be low key and try to make the best of it and try to find some way to reduce the impact of embarrassment and of a life rearranged by a baby, a change in plans. About 20 years ago now, I found out that my eldest daughter, unmarried, was pregnant. It was bad news. But I shared the news with a dear and wise friend who simply said, God needs this child to be born. Trust God. He has a plan. And in that moment, she reframed for me this unexpected birth. It must have been a shock and very bad news when Joseph found out that Mary, to whom he was betrothed, was pregnant. After all, Joseph was a very ordinary man, a person just like most of us, a quiet man who simply went about his routine work in his carpentry shop. The news of Mary's untimely pregnancy would have been a terrible embarrassment and humiliation to this simple yet righteous man. According to the law, as recorded in Deuteronomy, he could have called all the men in the village to come and stone her to death. So actually, his first impulse, which was to divorce her quietly, was in truth great kindness, because at least he wasn't going to have her killed. But Joseph, with the help of an angel in a dream, has a change of heart. Joseph answers the call to serve God. Unlike Mary, who sings and praises God when she is called, and who later generations will celebrate with angels and songs and halos and glory of all kinds, Joseph is silent. The gospel writers never give him a word to say, nor do they tell us anything else about him. But quietly, he follows God and is obedient to God's call. And I'm sure that it must have not always been easy to do that. This child whom God calls him to raise is exceptional, and the circumstances of his birth so extraordinary that Joseph's parenting would never have been easy. Though Joseph agrees to keep Mary and the baby, it does not mean that he wasn't still the object of ridicule and scandal. The message from the angel is not that people will be kind and say, oh, how wonderful a baby. The angel does not promise good fortune. The angel does not say that no one will ostracize the family or his carpentry business. The angel does not say it will be easy. I quite imagine that there was gossip and finger pointing. I imagine that some folks in Nazareth 
crossed the street to avoid meeting either Joseph or Mary. I imagine there were all those knowing and disapproving looks. You all know what I'm talking about. Oh, such shame. As Mary's condition became more and more obvious, the embarrassment must have grown worse. Luke tells us that Mary went and spent several months with her older relative, Elizabeth. It was probably a relief to get out of town and away from the scandal for a while. Yes, indeed, it will be hard to answer God's call, but the angel tells Joseph to fear not. Fear not, Joseph, for God is in the midst of this problem. You are to name the baby Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins, and they shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew describes Joseph as a righteous man. He must have also been a man of patience and broad shoulders, a man who was willing to allow God to come into his life and to use his life for God's purposes. A man willing to have God with him in more ways than one in order that God's will would be accomplished. Tradition of the church gives Joseph a bum rap, I think. He's often described or depicted as old and sometimes as angry, and he is soon forgotten by the tradition. He's never celebrated like Mary. But what he did for Jesus was extraordinary. He married Mary. He raised and supported this special child. He even took Mary and the baby and fled into Egypt for several years in order to avoid the malice of Herod and the threat to Jesus' life. He left his home and his work and his livelihood, and he went to live in a foreign land just to protect this child that wasn't even his. He must have truly trusted in God to go with him and to provide for him. And when an angel comes to him again in a dream and tells him to return to Israel, again, he trusts in God and quietly answers God's call and follows God's direction. And he takes his family to Nazareth. I wonder what it was like for Joseph day in and day out, raising this exceptional child. Though we know so little about Joseph, he must have in fact been a very good man, a man through whom Jesus might have come to understand something about God's presence and power in our lives. Jesus would undoubtedly have heard very early in life the story of his birth and of the scandal that surrounded his mother's pregnancy. He would have known of Joseph's selflessness and of his kindness to Mary. I wonder how Joseph may have helped Jesus to deal with the taunts and teasing he must have received from neighborhood children in Nazareth, children born in the midst of scandal or charges of immorality often suffer the sins of their parents. And I wonder how it went with Jesus' brothers and sisters. Yes, Mary and Joseph had other children. There are four or five mentioned in the book of Acts. They had a good-sized family. I wonder if Joseph treated Jesus differently than his siblings. I wonder as the years went by how Joseph continued to live out God's presence in his life. Yes, Jesus was God's son, but he was raised and nurtured by a very ordinary man who clearly served as a role model for living in faith and trust and with a heart open and willing 
to be obedient to God's call and God's presence. But how about us? How do we live out God's presence in our lives? Joseph was open to a dream and the possibility of God being there with him, of God guiding him and caring for him. God wants to come into all of our lives in the same way that he came into Joseph's life. God comes to us in many ways. God came to Joseph in the baby that he named Emmanuel, God with us. And God came to Joseph to uphold him and guide him through a difficult and challenging time. Joseph also allowed himself to be used by God to fulfill God's purposes. Most of us are just ordinary folk, just like Joseph. We go about our everyday lives, doing our job, earning a living, caring for our children. But our children and our neighbors watch us and see how we live. What do they see? Joseph must have earned the respect an admiration of every outsider in Nazareth, all those who lived on the margins. Because here was a man who truly lived the Shema, that commandment to love God and neighbor that is the root of Levitical law. Joseph didn't witness by standing on a street corner and preaching. He didn't teach in the synagogue. He was never called rabbi. Joseph just let the Lord live in his heart. And he obediently followed God, even when it was fearsome. He opened his heart to God's presence, to the Holy Spirit, to use his life for something greater than himself. He was an unselfish man a man willing to be a part of a greater good, of something profound that is beyond himself and his own desires. He was willing to believe that God was with him even before Jesus was born. Each Sunday during Advent, we have lit our candles with reminders of the coming of Emmanuel. God with us, and of how we can be ready for God. But we've talked about hope and peace and love and joy. We've also talked about being awake and alert for the signs of God's presence in the world and in our lives. We have talked about watching for God in the ordinary and unlikely places. We have focused on reminding ourselves to be open and welcoming of God's presence, a desire in our hearts that says, here I am, I am willing and wanting you to be here, God. We've talked about patience, about waiting, watching for God, allowing God to come to us in God's time when God is ready. Today, we talk about conceiving of God in our hearts. This is what was happening to Joseph. In his quiet way, he had been awake and alert to God. He had been open and welcoming of God. He'd gone about his daily life quietly and patiently, and then God came. God came, born in his heart and in his life in multiple ways. God living in him each and every day. God living in him, in his carpentry and in his care for his family and in his community and in his presence. To conceive is to begin, to start, to begin the process that leads to new life and birth. God came to an ordinary man 
Joseph and conceived in his heart a new life, a new way for himself and with his help for all humankind. Our rather unsung hero, Joseph, played a very important role in Jesus's life and in God's working out of God's plans for humankind. And God wants to come to each of us ordinary people in that same way. God can use each life for God's purposes if we are awake and open and ready for God in our hearts. God has a plan. even more plants than you have. God has a plan for you and for me. And that God has a plan for that little grandchild of mine born out of wedlock. Who's now a promising college sophomore. And we each have a choice. We can say yes or no when God asks us to do something as extraordinary as having a baby born of the Holy Spirit, like Mary, or as ordinary as being a steadfast and loving foster parent to a child. God can use our life and be with us no matter how mundane our life seems to be, and no matter how unremarkable we think we are, because God uses ordinary people to do his work. And his most important and profound work is done in the context of the everyday and the routine. It is done at the family table, in the schoolyard, in the office, in the factory, in the conversations that we strike up with folks in waiting rooms, elevators, or perhaps with the cashier at the checkout counter in the supermarket on a busy and hectic day. God also uses us ordinary folk when he asks us to help with refugees, those to serve on a church board, or to teach kids church, or to anonym anonymously maybe leave a box of food on the doorstep of a neighbor we know is in need. And sometimes God even asks us to be part of his vision for some bigger change, some bigger move for his world. God may ask us to help build a church or a community or to lead the effort for justice and equality and inclusion for those on the margins. God may even ask us to raise a child that is not our own. But no matter what, God is with us, and we do not need to be afraid. We need to trust and have faith, like that ordinary father and carpenter named Joseph. Amen. Now let's put a little joy in our hearts and sing joy to the world. Mm -hmm. 